Hey everyone, Jen from Stardust Wonder Tarot, and today we're going to do a walkthrough of the Fodor Pavlov Tarot. I'm so excited to get this one. Here's the box. More box. Whoops. Sorry about that. Upside down. Yes. And I am going to make sure my notifications are off. So here is, and I have to say that I absolutely love this deck. I always love this deck. I just love it. So here we go. There is the book. Now this is a hardcover book. Look at that. Like fancy. Love it. Um, so then we have a table of contents. Um... So Pavlov here, intro. I spent five years working on this deck, researching the history and the imagery of the cards, conceptualizing my own versions and interpretations, and then committing all this information to paper in the guidebook. Throw it in the fire and do whatever you want. My intention as an artist only goes so far. I communicate with my images and my words as best I can, but the rest is up to you. I will not throw this in the fire. I love this guidebook. So, I know, I'm just kidding. So then we have our major arcana here. And it shows the image, the number, the title, and then it goes into it here. Um, let's see. Let's just flip to one. The Hierophant. So it says, this is a card I struggle with quite a bit because I don't really like what it stands for. The interpretations of the Hierophant that I've read relate to dogmatism, maticism, oh, can't say that word, uh, tradition, morality, a lot of things I struggle to find a personal point of reference with. So they give a little bit of a, like a history of, you know, just kind of their thoughts on the card. But let's see, since there is definitely a religious aspect to my representation that harkens to Christianity, Christianity, but I did my best to strip the art of direct references and symbols that def definitely point to any one religion. The Hierophant is still representative of social and academic authority and thus can be conservative, dogmatic, and conformist. He can be interpreted as educator, a religious figure, or a moral authority constraining the querent but he can also be a positive influence, seeker of enlightenment and wise figure, willing and ready to help and to teach. So there we go there. And I love on the, I love this like little, the star kind of background and the scrolling. Look at scrolls, stars, sign me up. So then we go through and let's see. We go into the Minor Arcana. And let's see here. Let's go to one. Here we go. Knight of Wands. Knight of Wands is one of the most active across the Minor Arcana. She's an adventurer who harnesses the full energetic impulsive potential of the suit. She is a doer in a pursuit of her goal, a go-getter mounting obstacles and striving ahead. Her stave blossoms with greenery, a reoccurring visual in my description, depiction of the suit. Let's see, she can herald, a she can be a herald of exciting change, an encouraging card to see in a spread when you are setting out on a new endeavor, but she can also serve as a warning not to be careless and scatter in how we go about our adventure. Very wise advice, I'd have to say. So, um, uh -huh. I'm noticing something. I'm noticing the so we see with the wands here we have this scrolling. Can you tell I really like that? And as we move along here, so we have the cups, different color. Let me swords are red. Oh, I like that. And the coins are gold. So just a little something I noticed. And then we go into spreads. Look at that. Spread 
what's here. Celtic Cross, Relationship, Identity, Possibilities. And then we have our artist. Look at this. I love this picture. I want a picture of me like that. I want one. How fun. All right. So there we have our book. I like the hardcover. Okay. So I um, did, I did use this deck today. So it's not in order. Apologies. But we have, look at, I don't have my light on. I was trying to not make it too shiny here, but gold happening. Always love that. So here we go. I actually really love reading with these cards. Sorry, I'm just checking to make sure they're the right, right way. <laughs> oh boy. Um, it's just funny too, because some decks I pick up and it's like, whatever. But there are some decks that I read that I really just certain little things I tend to pick up in them. So this is definitely a deck like that. Like the little detailed images. Sorry. Um, I don't know. I really pick up a lot from them. And I always think that's so interesting. But reading their description and their intro and all of that, um, with all of the uh, research put into the symbols and the, the whatever was in the cards too, kind of makes sense to me. See, this is why it's always good to read the guidebook. I mean, you don't have to use it as like, you know, the end all or of everything, but it's good to get the insight and just kind of see where the writer and or artist or whichever both where they were at you know as they were creating this I really like this one I love that moon card really cool too. I love the contrasting colors. Um, I mean, I'm not an artist, but I assume, I don't know, this is kind of like a sepia, the base color, kind of like that. Um, but then they, there's this, these pops of color and I, I really do like them and they, correspond with the colors in the guidebook like the scrolling so I think that's kind of cool too I love that the swords are the red love them So I think I can safely say you need this deck. You just kind of do. And I love this world card. I actually love it. I'm kind of, you know, I'm a fan of the, I actually really love the swords in uh, tarot, which isn't like the common thing people love, but I do love the swords. And I love, actually, I love the color that they use for these cups, like the, the bluish color. Look at that card. 
love it. Definitely recommend it. So that's what we have here. The four door paddle of tarot. US Games. All right. Have a great day, guys.